personal best in two rounds. They are also the two fastest times in the world. She was sixth in her last Olympic trials appearance five years ago. I don't think three people are beating her here. Well, Otto, I got to say, I have a co-favorite in this race, and it's Jenna Prandini. She has shown so much promise since she was an NCAA champion in 2015. She has yet to win a medal on the world stage. I think this is finally Jenna Prandini's time. The Oregon faithful loving the appearance of Prandini. And here is Desiree Bryant, the U.S. champion two years ago. She is better at 200. She was eliminated in the semifinals of the 100 at these trials. She will run a storming turn. She always does. Here is Lena Irby, who's already on Team USA in the 4x4 relay pool. She says she struggled with crippling anxiety pre-race, but has worked with sports psychologists and making tons of progress there. And representing the University of Texas, Marlakea Kinnison got as far as the semifinals in the 100. So trying to make an individual team and to I Tokyo. Love, I love the way you always say the University I hear you of say Texas. it all the time. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> so in this final of the women's 200, there are three Olympians. Who will be the new ones? Will they be returning Olympians? And what has Alison Felix got in this final Olympic trials run after this celebrated, illustrious career? Her run home in the 400 to finish second was incredible. What kind of a race will Allison have here? Prandini's been running some phenomenal turns. She's going to run a good turn. Thomas is going to go with her. Okay. Felix third from the left, all in black there, lane seven. But on her inside, watch Gabby Thomas. And Gabby Thomas has already made up the stagger on Allison Felix. Allison has to hold on. Thomas is gone. Prandini is gone. Here comes Jenna Prandini in the white in the middle. It's Prandini and Thomas. Thomas is going to hang on, though. Coming to the line to win the women's 200, Gabby Thomas is going to Tokyo, 21.62. That's one of the fastest times ever in the event. These people will make the team. He is fourth fastest as we start here tonight. And that stiff competition comes in the form of 17-year-old Arian Knighton. Before these championships started, I thought he had an outside shot of finishing top three. After watching him break Usain Bolt's junior record running 1988, he is now the favorite. He turned 17 in January. He'd be the youngest man to make the U.S. track and field team since Jim Ryan qualified in 1964, the first high schooler since 1972. And here's Benarek. He's been very steady and consistent through the rounds. He won his semifinal. And I think three people will not beat him tonight. On the outside of Kenny Benarek is Isaiah Young. Terrence Laird is in nine. On the inside, very inside, is Fred Curley in two. Kyrie King, Andrew Hudson. That's your full field. Noah Lyles is in five. When you come to the Olympic trials, you almost discard the paper. You trust what your eyes are telling you. And so far through the rounds, our eyes are telling us, Sonia, that Knighton has been looking better than anybody else. But this is the guy with the 19.5 PR. He has to summon a season's best to make this team. The high schooler, the 17-year-old who's now gone pro, is fourth from the left. And it's Benarek who will lead off of the turn. The high schooler has some work to do, but Noah Lyles is in a good position. Here comes Noah Lyles. Kenny Benarek. How about it, Ian Knighton? That looks like the three going to Tokyo. Just signed a big deal with Nike. Going professional this week, a thing mo. And I know from watching her over the years that Ajay Wilson usually likes the front run. Oh, wow, oh. collision already, and that almost took out a thing mo. That's near Aikens. She picks herself back up and gets going. That was a hard fall. And it's Chanel Price who assumes 
the duty of early leader, 26-9 through 200. You never know what's going to happen in this race, especially when they're all so close in the beginning half. I think Mo now I want to get clear and focused. We talk a lot about this young superstar. What makes her so special? She's so tall. She's so fast in the 400. I talked to her coaches. It's her capacity to train. No matter how much work they give her, she never gets tired. She's always able to push through. It's Chanel Price leading the way, a thing Mo. The thing you will notice about Mo is she never looks stressed. You don't often see her pushed. The facial expression doesn't change. She always looks in control, and that's what we're witnessing right now. And she looks like she has a lot more gears than everybody behind her now. She is really pushed through this third 200. And let's also keep an eye on Kate Grace, who's a 1,500-meter runner and knows how to finish strong. If she's in the mix, she could be in contention for this team. A thing Mo with a lot of daylight in front of her and once she has space she is going to be hard to beat less than 200 to go chanel price all in green is running well in second who's going to get that top three rj wilson is struggling a thing mo is on pace to break the american record 155 61 is the time look at this raven rogers gets up in the second it's all a thing mo is that record gonna fall no it's not 150 European champion, of course, last year in Berlin. And look at the difference in the speed of Cherry as he passes her down the back stretch. She did well, the Polish athlete to hang on. She made the Jamaican, the Bahrainian, and the British athletes work really, really hard into that home straight. They weren't far off a bronze medal. I think this event will grow and grow. It's popular already here. The crowd.